And a big welcome back to the Ask Coach Wendy Show. Alongside Wendy Mater in Colorado, I'm Dave Erickson. Today's topic has to do with cycling. Uh, our off-season is upon us, and people will probably be on their trainers working on their overall endurance and hopefully their technique. And Wendy, you have some tips for cycling more efficiently, things that we can do on our trainers. What are those? Well, I think like any sport, when you work on technique, it's giving you free speed. Um, sometimes we're more in the heat of the moment race season when we're working on our lactate threshold or our endurance or strength. We neglect the technique part. So this time of year, off season, fall, winter is a great time to really focus on that. Um, I also like to say it's best to focus on your technique on your bike, but you could also get the same benefits if you go to an indoor gym, um, a spinning class, or one of the just the regular um, bike machines that they have at a health club. But when it comes to cycling technique, um, I like to focus on cadence. Um, I like to I like to actually focus on low cadence, um, under 70 RPMs, and high cadence over 100 RPMs. Um, and while we're doing these different cadence drills, I like to focus on the four main aspects of the pedal stroke. Um, the first one is um, how, how you push over the top, and then um, you go from 12 o'clock to 6 o'clock. That's really going to give you a lot of power and force. But an often neglected part of the pedal stroke is, is pulling back and trying to engage your hamstring and your, your glute muscle. And a, a lot of times you'll read an article and they, they say it's like scraping uh, mud off your shoe. When you're pulling back, you want to drop that heel and scrape mud off your shoe. But you don't want to forget after you pull back, you also got to pull up. That can also give you some neglected power. Um, something to, to think about is your feet are in opposite directions. So as one, the left foot's pulling back, the right foot's pushing over the top. So when you can start to be very mindful, mindful of what the left and right foot are doing in opposite directions, um, you, you really can get that efficient circle that that you read about is pedaling in circles. So I wrote a blog about a little bit about um, breaking up the four pedal aspects of the cycling stroke. And that's the downstroke, backstroke, upstroke, upstroke, and over the top over, stroke. Over the top stroke. Yeah. Okay. I've heard people talk about incorporating fast pedals in their workouts or one-legged uh, pedal strokes. What are your thoughts on that, and how would you uh, incorporate in that into a workout? Well, the one-legged the one-legged drills are really good to do and focus on those four aspects. You just unclip with one leg, kind of put it up, or just hang it out, and then. Um, you're just pedaling with one leg and more often than not you're going to find one leg has what's called a dead spot a dead spot and usually that dead spot is pulling back pulling back or up for most athletes who aren't familiar with having to really try to do that and you'll start to feel that like a little like uh 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 and then the more you do those one legged drills it'll start to smooth itself out where you can, you know, maybe at first you can only go 20 seconds. It's like doing a squat. It's very fatiguing doing one-legged drills. Um, maybe 20 seconds, then you build up to 30, 40, 50, 60. And then once you get really efficient, you, you don't have that lag or that dead spot, um, that hitch. Um, you know that you're pedaling more efficiently and you should go faster just because you're engaging more muscles in your leg. And then the spin-up drills, um, it's just trying to stay steady and smooth at a faster cadence, like 100, 120 RPMs. If you start to bounce, then you're not ready for that and you're probably going a little bit too hard. But it's trying to really isolate the hips below to do all the work and not allow your upper body to do any work at a higher cadence. And isn't one of the keys with these uh, one-legged strokes or fast pedals is keeping the chain tight and finding the right, um, the right gear so you're not... The right gear, yeah. Yeah. You know, I think when you're when you're a little bit if you're a little bit weaker and you don't have that leg strength, you want to just go start in an easy gear. You know, just so you know you can pedal. And then over time as your leg gets stronger, you kind of inc increase that gear race ratio and see if you have a dead spot in a harder gear. And another way to kind of gauge progress is is looking at a power meter and seeing what your power is like at different gears and what's the optimal gear to um, cadence ratio for power. And you were mentioning that maybe 20 seconds at a time, one leg uh, for these one-legged drills, what, uh -huh. four, five sets maybe at 20 yeah, seconds apiece? Yeah, I, like I like to say five, five to ten, you know. I think starting at five and progressing. And you, you kind of know when you're ready. 
Um, Because you'll feel like, oh, I went for 30 seconds and I didn't even realize it. I must be getting more efficient in my pedaling stroke. And would you do this in the beginning of maybe an hour and a half bike ride on your trainer? At what stage would you do this to be good? I think doing them on the trainer is the best way to do it. I I don't know if you've ever tried a one-legged pedaling drill out on the road. (laughs) Sometimes sometimes it doesn't work out that way if you're going up an incline. But trainer, trainer, it's a a beneficial way to to do it on the trainer Um, before, maybe in the middle of it. If if your off-season consists of a harder, more intense ride, um, being mentally focused on it during that and then doing them at the end. I like to practice good habits in the beginning and finish with good habits at the end of a workout just to reinforce the good habits. And, and the beginning and end is perfect. And Wendy has a section on her website on t2coaching.com under the bike section where she talks about these things in written form. So uh, good stuff, Wendy. If you have a question for Wendy, use the hashtag AskCoachWendy on Twitter, Facebook, or YouTube. Thanks, Wendy. Thank you.